PPL fans, salutations, welcome to week two of the transfers. I'm here once again ready to transfer you some knowledge onto you. Uh, you know, uh, we're very ready. You know, this, this week uh, has been crazy, week two has been crazy, and now we're going very close to week three. And let's see what has happened this week, right? What we can expect uh, for week three. Obviously, the transfers would be the ch the Pokemon changes that the coaches have made on the PPL uh, for this week onwards, right? And uh, basically, uh, we have uh, put quite a bit of um, quite a bit of changes this week. You know, they gave me a lot of work, must say, and that is uh, you know. I don't like working at all, but uh, I am very happy to show you the latest news, as always. And what can you expect uh, for week three? Uh, the week three matches, which should be going up tomorrow, if this video is published in the time uh, that is correct. Let's hope that is the case. Um, lots of changes this week. We're starting directly with Vepsis. Vepsis pretty much has been seeing at his regenerator core and uh, he basically just said I'm done playing with that no more you know I'm tired of this he has uh, decided to improve his team right as much as possible and he made five changes to his team including one of the terra captains the raptor <gasps> that's right uh, he dropped fortress mianshao the raptor uh, Crabominable and Galarian Sloking. Some of them are interesting, right? Uh, some of them make sense, like for example, drop him Crabominable uh, without Terra. Uh, I don't think any team should expect Crabominable to make it to the end of the season, to be honest. Uh, you know, less the beginning. So uh, it's curious enough that he has drafted it already, but uh, this thing is gone. But then dropping Galarian Sloking, it is well said that he's one of the best Pokemons on draft. Uh, he's done with it, you know, same as Mianshao, very good Pokemon as well, got the regen, got offensive uh, presence. And then a Fortress, which is usually not very steamed as a draft Pokemon, but it does the job, you know, it's a, a hazard control Pokemon, uh, tanky. Uh, but he's made some very interesting changes, and I'm going to show you what he has picked right now, right? He has picked Ogre Pong, Wellspring, Revavroom, Conkelda, Rotom, Suppository Form, and then the Greedent. Uh, they forced me in the PPL to tell you that Greedent is a god, right? So these changes are completely approved and, uh, you know, and respected. Uh, some people may say that the people who's running the PPL are terrible people and you should not support the, uh, the league. But uh, these people's wrong, you know, because they are Greedent enjoyers. And so am I, you know, I love Greedent and I love seeing it drafted. Uh, but the good things, Ogre Pond Wellspring unnoticed until now. The Ogre Pond forms only the Rock one and the Teal one has been picked. Uh, and now we got Wellspring uh, starting from week three onwards on Vapsis team. Insane. And same goes for uh, Conk, honestly. Conk Helder, it's, uh, I think it's more of a threat that people give it credit for. It's a classic, right? Now he can defog too. Uh, don't ask me how he does it, but uh, he can, right? Uh, <laughs> and, you know, powerful priority, powerful facades, and just all around a Pokemon that can hit very hard uh, while being decently tanky too. So, very interesting picks. Rev of Room without Terra. Man's got a plan for sure for that. And then we got, you know, Green without Terra and Rota without Terra. So you're telling me that he made all these transactions without a Terramon? He's dropped Staraptor. He has to have another Terramon. He moved the Terramon to Diancy. And Diancy is going to be fighting and fire type. That's the two Terras that he chose for his Terra Captain, Diancy. Man's cooking, you know, let me tell you. He is cooking for sure. Um, he has been very nice, kind enough to, on the transaction chat on the PPL, to give us uh, some sort of explanation, right? Very quick, three points. Uh, as you can see, wanted to try Ogre Paul Wellspring, and uh, though about, you know, the change in the end of the draft, right? Um, he just wanted to try Ogre Paul Wellspring. Surprising that he hasn't been drafted, to be honest. And maybe that situation has been too much for him, right? And he had to try it as well. And you know, good stuff. Uh, this Pokemon's good. He's a Water Absorber, and I know he's going to be facing the um, Rain team later on, so... That makes sense, you know? Um, Personal-wise, as you can see in number two, he said that his original draft was boring and just wanted to do something else. 
uh, outside of his beds, you know. So, uh, wanted to explore more sciences outside of ornithology. That's very good. I hope you little Danos are happy with this because the three, you know, the third explanation is just greed, and, uh, which I agree, you know, that comes with the contract uh, that you have to sign while applying for the PPL in any way. Uh, you just have to be a greed and fan, and if not, um, you will become one. No problem at all. And that's it. That's the changes. I just want to say thank you as well to Q for providing a very deep, um, very deep thought out meme. There it is. Thank you very much, Q. That was nice. You, he didn't even make any changes. His team is perfect, it seems. Uh, but he decided to, to participate and just said this on the chat. So, uh, you know, thanks. <laughs> And for the second team change that's spectacular this week, it's not only Vepsis, no, 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 no. Seabad, uh, big man Seabad has decided to make actually four drops and four picks. Can you believe this? Wow. He has <laughs> dropped very interesting mons. Uh, two of them are very strong and one and the other two are not that strong because they're not Terrors. So that, I think that's you want to place with a point with those two. Uh, but he basically is dropping Heatran. Yeah, Pokey Aim. Hey, you know, I listen to Pokey Aim, what, what, what the man has to say every now and then, right? He says that Heatran is an excellent one in draft. But see, by this is like, it's like, nah, I'm dropping that. I don't want some fucking Heatran here, right? I don't want the hot potato to here. It's gone. It's gonna drop Mandibus as well, which personally um, affects me, right? I love Mandibus uh, competitively in Pokemon uh, drafts as well. Um, it hurts to see this Pokemon go on any team, to be honest. So. Um, it's fucked up. And then he drops Electrifier and Glass Glassier. Glassier is good, but with Terra, right? That's pretty much what makes it good this generation, I feel, in draft format. And same goes for Electivire, which it's usable as well with Terra. Without it, I just feel like they are panning the ass to bring the games, to be honest. And I think Seabad might think as well. Uh, we haven't got any information about this, but uh, he has decided to go back to the classics and make his team uh, see good this time. He's gonna bring Ogre Pond Hearth Flame, so all the Ogre Ponds have been drafted. What? Insane. <laughs> and he's gonna go with a double fire because he also picks Daddy Incineroar as well with this, right? So basically, uh, I think Incineroar works more of a dark type since he dropped Mandibus, right? But he does have a double fire right there. Interesting combination. He's very experienced in using Ogre Pond and has been, you know, he's done well with it in the past. Uh, and then he's got uh, Fortress. So Fortress that has been dropped basically from uh, the, you know, uh, Vepsis' team. Uh, he has been picked right now by Seabat, which is very nice, you know. Fortress is not without a home. We'll have to see it. And last Pokemon is going to be Lantern, right? I'm a fan of Lantern. Used it in PPL Season 2 myself. And uh, it did good, honestly. Having this one, even without the Terror, right? The immunities that he can provide to the team, the annoying support moves that he can have, um, and the great HP pool. It makes it a pretty decent Pokemon. Not a good Pokemon, but one that can bring to one or two games and do do the thing, you know, which is pretty much uh, paralyze your opponent, right? Uh, <laughs> that's what Lantern does, right? He just win games, and you guys should know it. The last segment of the team is going to be the rest of the teams that have decided to make small changes to their teams. They're not going to be as crazy as Vepsis' and Seabat's team, but they're still, you know, there's changes going on. They're preparing for future matches. They want to try other things uh, or correct the mistakes that they have done in the past. Um, we actually have four teams, if you can believe it, that have done uh, Terra Captain changes. That's it. No more. Uh, they don't have picked or dropped any Pokemon. They basically just changed Terra Captains on their teams. Uh, we're going to start with Ellie. Uh, Ellie is going to be, you know, putting a Fairy type on that Jolteon instead of water. Um, fairy type is much better on Jolteon. You get buffed. Uh, alluring, alluring voice with that and some nice resistances. It's a shame to see Terra Water go because I do really like it. Uh, and it has decided a more meta, right? She has decided a more meta um, Terra type, which is, you know, not very exciting but uh, understandable, right, guys? Uh, then we have Sweet Daria, pretty much changing his colossal to uh, from grass to ghost. Uh, 
interesting change as well. Uh, as I said before, listening to Pokey, I'm pretty sure on his uh, draft reaction, he basically mentioned that Ghost uh, perhaps could be a better typing for Colossal. And seems like Daria agrees, right? Could make Colossal a pretty good lead. Uh, that spin blocks, right? Because Colossal can set up spikes. And if you transform it into a ghost type, then it's a spin blocker at the same time. So your lead is basically making it possible for the opposing uh, team to, to rapid spin. And perhaps they don't have a default, because this is League, you know? Uh, so very interesting change. I'm always liking spikers uh, with Terra Ghost, to be honest. So. Uh, let's hope to see that Daria can cook some nice stuff with it, honestly, I'm, I'm excited to see it. They have Jack Gravy uh, changing as well, Braviary, his Isuya Bravery is gonna be going to Steel to Fairy type. Um, two very meta strong types, right? Um, but going with Fairy, let's see what he's planning to do with it, right? As I said before, most of this changes are to prepare against future matches that perhaps are not going to be this week specifically but later on so uh, we'll see what happens and last but not least we're gonna have uh, Uzi uh, basically Uzi is gonna underdogingly pick uh, the Terra water on Galarian Slowbro uh, instead of poison right so uh, PPL you don't have to have the, the one of the stabs no more for this season so you can change them and basically he's gonna pick Terra water on Slowbro he's gonna picking a Slowbro at home basically right uh, or is it better who knows Uzi has to pretty much show us uh, what's this plant's all about and um, I can't wait to see it guys week three is about to begin that's it for the news today I hope you guys have enjoyed it and that this was informative in some capacity and uh, I hope you have a good day you know see you in the streets of draft C draft league city almost messed that up all right see you guys